Hi guys. Today I thought would be an interesting theme for a video and it may not be a typical type of ASMR trigger but I hope it's enjoyable nonetheless. There's going to be a lot of ambient noise. I'm currently at work. Even though we're closed for the afternoon that might not stop people from shaking the door handle and trying to come in so there might be a lot of edits in here. But today is going to be a sort of unboxing video with a computer build. Um, I am retiring my desktop that I have been working with for about seven years. I have been an Intel fangirl for most of those seven years and with my video editing um, being more of a priority now in my life, I am going to give AMD another shot. And I am going to be going with the new Ryzen processor. And I have had one of the original i7s, the 920 series, for a very long time. I'm going to try to focus the camera a little better. I've had a 920 i7 for seven years. Before that, I think I had an AM3 AMD processor for a short amount of time, and then Intel really just took over, and I've been having Intel ever since then. So, the Ryzen, and a lot of benchmarks, has been very good with video editing and rendering. So, I'm going to go back to AMD for a while. There's a couple of steps I'm going to skip in this, just for time's sake, and also watching me wrestle with the aesthetics of wiring. It might be very boring. I have my little petri dish of screws. And I have a Bit Phoenix. I'm gonna move the camera here. See if we can go around. Bit Phoenix Neos in matte white and purple, which is going to have a plexiglass window and purple lights. And at the top, we're going to have our buttons, our USB 3 all of that good jazz. And this is the hardware that will be going into it. This is the Ryzen 1700. It's not the 1700X. I would have gotten the X, but my budget says no. <laughs> so there's a couple of steps that I'm going to omit from this build just because there's some parts of it that are going to be kind of boring and kind of frustrating, like wiring and reading manuals. And normally when we do any big build, we wear our nitro gloves so that we don't actually touch the components and ESD is not so much of a concern. Although my bench that's right next to me is grounded. So if I were to be doing any kind of work, I can just ground myself real quick by touching it. And another thing that I'd like to upgrade in the future would be my memory. Right now I'm going to be using a 16 gigabyte kit instead of 32, but the board that I purchased has four slots, so I can upgrade possibly in the future, but it's the ballistics two 8 gig sticks with a 16 gig pack. Ooh, shiny. There's not really that much to show and tell about that. That's DDR4 memory. I'm going to be going with an M.2 525 gigabyte solid state storage. And because it's really not that much storage, I'm going to be 
reusing my Faithful Western Digital 500 that I kidnapped from Spud, my previous build. He's a little bit dusty. But I've had this hard drive for 12 years <laughs> and it hasn't died yet, so this is going to be just for my video game storage and it was one of the Western Digital Black Editions that was, uh, it's a 10,000 RPM drive. So, it was really good for its time. And then, this is a used component, but this is the GTX 1070. And I bought this from my coworker. I previously had an 8, or I'm sorry, a 780 uh, Ti, I think it was a Ti, I'm pretty sure it was a Ti, um, and he got a GTX 1080, uh, so he upgraded and I purchased his 1070, because he has the uh, Acer Predator monitor and he wants to be able to play his games at their native resolution on the screen. So that is the beefiest looking graphics card I think I have ever, ever had. I remember when the Radeon 9700 first came out and that was probably when I took up PC gaming. And that was really big for its time. So those are the items that don't really need to necessarily be unboxed. There's really not that much show and tell. For our motherboard, I am going with ASRock. Normally go with MSI or with ASUS, but the ASRock was one of the better rated ones. And with our basics, we have our IO shield, our layout, our manual, and it feels like there's a disc in there. itty-bitty screws for the M.2s, two SATA connections, and here is the big pretty, pretty part. If you've built computers or if you're a technician and a computer builder, I don't know if anybody else has this sort of thing, but I absolutely love the smell of brand new motherboards. It's like the first thing I get I have to do when I get a new board, so I have to smell it. I am going to put the board in the box. DDR4 slots, uh, it's an AM4 socket, two PCI Express graphics slots, I'm only doing one graphics card, and then on the I.O. we have, looks like five USB 3.0, we have the new Type-C USB, HDMI, VGA, DVI, PS2, <laughs> PS2, and regular USB 2.0 ports, along with a standard onboard audio. And it's a nice, beautiful black, white, and silver. It smells good. <laughs> it smells really good. aftermarket cooler. I don't believe that the Ryzen actually comes with a cooler, but I'm going to be using the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo. This is like the legendary uh, cooler that has been around forever. It's probably the most widely produced aftermarket
aftermarket cooler for almost every socket type out there, and it is beautiful. So my previous system. I tend to name my computers as well. My previous computer I named Spud, and this one is going to be Nugget. <laughs> so I'm going to take a little bit of time to read some of the instructions. I want to make sure this is my first AM4 build, so I want to make sure that I'm going to be mounting the heatsink and the processor correctly. And then I will get everything plugged in and uh, do a uh, bench test to make sure everything powers up and posts. I'll see you in a little bit. So after reading the instructions, I realized that I will not be using the um, Cooler Master heatsink and fan because I did not get the bracket that is supposed to be used on the mounting harness here. So I'm going to be using the stock cooler, but I also was able to open it up and very happy to see that it did contain a stock cooler. So this is the first step in most big builds, is your CPU installation. videos do you suddenly realize just how squeaky the table is that you're working on? <laughs> on here and use my own. So it'll be just a second. ceramic because if you have anything that kind of over <laughs> splooges all over the place, if you put too much on, it's non-conductive. Uh, it's not going to damage anything, whereas if you use the silver stuff, that can also um, it makes contact with the board. You don't really want it to do that. And I'm 
Not sure if I'm right or wrong. I don't really think that there's an answer for it. It's just variances. But I personally do not see anything wrong with spreading thermal crease out with your finger. That's what I've done on my PCs and I've gamed very heavily on them and I haven't had any major problems. the big expensive guy. So I'm, gonna be, I'm gonna shut up and just work for a couple months. cringe but I'm sorry <laughs> all right looks like we're going to be this just seems weird putting it on sideways where is our four pin it's gonna go up here so if that mounts on there like so is that gonna be able to reach good contact and we have a little bit of thermal bleed and that's that's not worrisome.
Where's my motherboard manual? A1 and B1. Always the fun bit. Always the fun bit is reading the instructions on every single motherboard dual channel memory. Okay, so it'll be A1 and B1. For dual channel configuration, you always need to install identical brand size and chip type. Able to activate dual channel technology with only one or three memory modules. It is not allowed to install DDR, DDR2, or 3 memory into DDR4. See, I kind of knew that shutting the door on our off hours, people still would run in here. Okay, back to business. and then we have a secondary. So I think this is going to be where the storage goes. M2. So, I'm going to hook up a monitor and a power supply and do a bench test just to make sure that everything does a power on cycle. Recognizes the M.2. And then if everything goes successfully, then we can mount it in the case and then get the graphics card in. So I'm going to take a time out here real quick and do a quick bench test, make sure that everything works. Okay, the 
this is going to be a little bit more messy. But it's also the, the super, super fun part. At least I think it's super fun. gets its like heartbeat. I'm terrible with wire management. That part I'll definitely cut out. But it looks like we have front USB headers are when I focus the camera a little bit better. our USB 3.0 header, our front audio, USB, oh wait no that's USB 3.0, that must be USB 2.0, and then that is our front fan, we also have a back fan, I have a modified power supply that I've added my own super quiet low decibel um, fan into the bottom, so it's also got one of those weird connections on it that plugs into the board. And first part of putting the heart back inside of the computer is putting your Iowa shield in. If I don't get my glove caught. reasons why I wanted to switch my graphics card is because the 780 that I previously had is a 220 watt graphics card and the 1070 I think it's 90? It's, it's like ridiculous how much better it is and also going from a 90 watt i7 power efficient AM4. I'm happy about that. Alright, so when I line this up with uh, the graphics card, so it's going to be the right slot, right? Thank you. 
Also, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but I did have the RAM in the wrong slots. <laughs> it is 2400 RAM, and that goes in the slots um, A2 and B2. So, oops. So I have to add my graphics card in order to test it. I don't even know if I'm using the right screws. I don't think I no, I think I am. It's just not very many of them. CPU heatsink here. The fan has a LED and it can be red, green, or blue. When I first turned that on to do the bench test and to make sure everything powered on, it was gorgeous. I'm totally not that sad now about uh, the CPU cooler not working. Because that is a gorgeous looking CPU. graphics card. Where did I put it? Oh, I put it over here. And let's get the, uh, let's get the chassis fan put in. So that it's not dangling all over the place. Is there any way that I can do this and not look so terribly sloppy? You might hear one of my co-workers who's also here. Which is one of the reasons why I'm building up front. People see me and they think even though we're closed that they might still be able to come in. It's because they can see me working up front. <laughs> Alright, and this is the 
big bad boy. Look at him. Mm, he's so pretty. video card I have ever had. She's a beast. It's also going to function as chassis fan number two, and I modified that so that I could change the um, RPMs of it. It's actually not a stock cooler power supply. Then we have our 24 pin. Biggest, ugliest wire of them all.
afraid if I have it wiring through the heatsink. Oh, that kind of works pretty nicely there. It's not great, but it's not horrible. All right. One beast left, and that is a standard SATA 2 hard drive, because we're, we're cheap, and we don't like to purchase new things. I'm guessing it's going to hide best on the bottom. Perhaps someday. Seriously? What? What am I looking at? Oh, okay. I see. But your holes are in the wrong place. using too old of a hard drive, is that what you're telling me? <sighs> Alright, I gotta make a modification. Okay. Modification has been made. Computer is designed thinking that whoever was going to install these would have modern, thinner SATA hard drives. Not me. I got the chubby ones. They're ancient. Do you see that there's wiring capabilities in the back? <sighs> It'd be neater that way, but I'm lazy. <sighs> no, I'm gonna do it. Just do it. so nonchalant about the organization of the cables. I'm usually a lot better because the window on the sky is specifically looking at like this portion in this way. And it's my own case, I don't really care. But I'm usually a lot better with my wiring. I usually will tuck it behind the motherboard or uh, usually if you have a spot in the back panel that you can weave it through. I'm usually a lot more adamant about cable control than what you're seeing, but it's mine, so. super awesome, but I can't afford to be super, super awesome right now, but it's mediocre awesome.
pretty pretty with the exception of the wiring. Now to load windows. I heard people cringe even from the internet when I said that. Now to install windows. And I'll take a couple of little clips of how she looks afterwards.